Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the idea of overthinking. The idea of overthinking is something that often comes up when I'm going to other people to talk about problems that I have. So for example, I have some situation that's bothering me, and I go to someone to get advice or to talk about it, and I share some thoughts, and often the person will say to me, oh, you're overthinking it. And like, the implication is that the problem is that I'm thinking about it too much, and I need to just do something or just stop thinking about it. And I don't find this at all empowering. Like, when people say this to me, it's usually not very useful at all. Because first of all, just telling someone to stop overthinking isn't going to do them any good. So, like, if you type into YouTube how to stop, one of the first things that comes up is how to stop overthinking. So obviously, people have a problem with doing this. It's sort of like if I say, don't think of a pink elephant. Like, all of a sudden, a picture of a pink elephant pops into your head, and it's like, no, stop thinking about that. That's not how the brain works. You can't necessarily stop something by just telling yourself to stop doing that. And whatever thought process is going on that people are labeling as overthinking is probably like that too. Like, if you have thoughts that are like a negative cycle of thoughts associated with depression or anxiety or something like that, it's probably not going to go away by just telling someone to stop thinking about it. And I also think that there's this untruthful idea in the concept of overthinking. Like, the idea of overthinking seems to imply that the problem is that you're thinking too much. And in my own experience with depression and anxiety, and particularly with overcoming depression and seeing what approaches work and what approaches don't work, I've learned that the problem in these mood disorders is not that you're thinking too much, but rather it's a problem in how you're thinking. So, you're thinking in the wrong ways, or you're thinking in ways that aren't working for you. You're thinking in ways that are untruthful, or that are distorted. And this is the idea in cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a very effective treatment for depression, anxiety, and a number of other mental disorders. And I found it very effective for me, too. I noticed that when people talk a lot about overthinking, these people often seem to continue to struggle with depression and anxiety. I see this a lot on Tumblr blogs. There are a lot of blogs where people will have problems with depression and anxiety and other mental illness, and they'll share all these memes and posts that talk about overthinking, and they're like, oh, I have this problem with overthinking, and blah blah blah. And to me, this is reinforcing that people who really believe in this concept are having trouble getting out of this state of mind that they're in, and the concept itself is not useful. So, I want us to move beyond this. So what is a better way to think about thinking? I think that it's, it's important when you're in a state of mind where you're either in some downward spiral with negative thoughts and negative mood, or whatever thought process you're using is repeating itself, and it's not working for you. It's making you feel bad, or it's flowing into actions that you don't really want to be doing. When you're in this situation, you obviously need to break that cycle, and you need to break out of it. But I think the solution doesn't lie in stopping thinking at all. It just lies in shaping your thinking in a new way. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. So one, one really powerful way that I've found is getting out and going on a walk. And I think there are two reasons why this helps. So one of them is that you're getting physical exercise. And physical exercise often provides an immediate boost in your mood. And walking is particularly good because it's light to moderate exercise. If you engage in strenuous exercise, you might feel really run down, or beat afterwards, and that might not be great for your mood. 
but walking is a sort of gentle exercise that stimulates your body and mind, and I find is one of the best ways to get me into a better mindset. I also think that walking is helpful because of the change of setting, because I'm going outside, I'm breathing in fresh air, and I'm seeing new things, so I have new information presented to me. So if I'm sitting inside in my room, in my apartment, and I go outside, even if I'm just walking around my apartment complex or walking around the block, it's going to make a profound difference in how I'm thinking. And I found that often that one thing alone is enough to get me into a more positive mindset. And I might be still thinking, and thinking in depth, about all the same things I was thinking about, but I'm going to be thinking in a new way, because I'm getting my mind and body working in a new way by going on a walk. Another thing I want to talk about is actually systematically changing your way of thinking about something. And there are different methods to do this. I mentioned cognitive behavioral therapy earlier, and I highly recommend it if you can go and find a therapist who practices that. If you're able to do that, that's often a great option, but I know that it can sometimes be hard and sometimes expensive to find therapists, and it can even be harder sometimes to find a competent one. So I know that option isn't available for everyone, and not everyone wants it either. There are also good self-help books that are related to cognitive behavioral therapy. One that I recommend is called Feeling Good by David Burns, and the same author has one called When Panic Attacks. I highly recommend both of those books. But besides formal therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy, there are tons of different ways you can achieve a similar sort of result of changing the way you think. One of them is by talking to new people and getting different perspectives on your situation. So if you either don't talk to people at all, or you always talk to the same people, maybe try talking to a completely different person about the things that are bothering you, or the things that are not working for you. Because sometimes getting a new perspective is enough to get you into a new way of thinking. Another thing that I find super helpful for changing my way of thinking about something is journaling. Sometimes when I write my thoughts out on the page, when I see them written out, it's easier for me to spot problems in them, distortions, errors in my reasoning. And I often have these exercises where I brainstorm new ways of thinking about a situation, or new approaches. If you can get into a mindset where you're doing that, you can even draw like diagrams or pictures. Sometimes I find that helpful. Um, if you do this and get into this brainstorming mindset where you're trying to think about something differently, you can often change the way you think you can combine all these approaches too. So for example, say you're at home, and you're really getting bogged down in this cycle of negative thinking. Well, maybe go on a walk and have a destination in mind, like maybe a friend's house that you could contact, or maybe the library, or maybe a coffee shop or something. And maybe bring your journal with you, and go there, and so you, you get walking, and you get kind of your body and mind working in a new way, and then when you get there, you're ready to brainstorm new ways of thinking about the situation. And you can write in your journal, you have like a fresh start. I find this really helpful. And what's interesting about this, all of these things involve thinking. You're not thinking any less, you're not stopping thinking, you're just thinking in a new way. And I think this is really empowering. So I hope we can get rid of this idea of overthinking, because I find it's not really helpful for getting out of these negative thought spirals. And I think other frameworks of thinking, like thinking in a new way, that sort of mindset, I think that that's a much better way of approaching this kind of problem, much better for promoting mental health. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.